Hi Fran and Vivian, great to uh, meet you in Australia. Vivian, could you tell us about uh, gene ethics? Yep, uh, gene ethics has been around for a really long time. We're in our 24th year and um, we're a network of um, concerned citizens and activists uh, working on GM free, mostly in Australia, but also we've got links with organisations in other countries. And Fran, you're one of the co-founders of MADGE. Tell us what MADGE stands for and uh, what the organisation does. Okay, MADGE stands for Mothers Are Demystifying Genetic Engineering, which is a bit of a mouthful. But what we try and do is we inform ordinary people about uh, what's happened to our food so uh, they can make choices and decide whether they want to eat GM or not. When did you set this up? We set it up in 2007 when the Victorian government in Australia was thinking about lifting the GM ban and I was really concerned about um, you know, what was happening to our food. Uh, Vivian, tell us about some of your current campaigns and some of the issues in Australia regarding GM. Well, we've been working on um, the GM canola for a long time. Um, there's been commercial crops of GM canola in Australia since 2008. So we've been working on raising public awareness of that and um, keeping down the acreage of GM canola and also uh, we remain hopeful that people will eventually say no, we don't want this and just get rid of it. And currently we have had bans on GM in all states but they've made exemptions with canola now in New South Wales and Victoria um, two years ago and just last year in Western Australia. So um, they have started growing that and also GM cotton um, which has been used in some food um, so but we've still got South Australia is a big canola growing state and they've currently got a ban and also some other states Tasmania has also got a ban and um, Australian Capital Territory so we want to keep those bans in place which is uh, a bit of a challenge sometimes given um, everything going on with the contamination on the borders and that sort of thing. So we've been working on that a lot and we're also starting to look into doing more on GM wheat because of the trials of GM wheat in Australia. We're very concerned about um, the fact that it could come here and we could be the first country in the world to start growing commercially and um, nobody wants GM wheat so we, we're just trying to raise public awareness about that and also um, just make sure that it doesn't come here because if it does it's our staple and it's a huge export crop and that would be terrible for our markets because what we've seen with canola contaminating non-GM um, non crops is that if we had GM wheat um, we wouldn't have a choice to not have GM wheat, it would all be GM eventually and every time we have our bread and pasta and noodles and make our kids lunches they'd be eating GM so we're really concerned. Um, and just an example of what's happening with the con contamination for canola. Uh, we've had our first farmer, an organic farmer, contaminated by GM canola. It's the first time any farmer has had GM canola come onto their farm. And he's been decertified because of the GM on his farm. So he's fighting that. And it's, it's a <clears throat> it will be a test case to see if he manages to get back, um, you know, get some compensation for his livelihood that he's lost as a result of the contamination. This is Steve Marsh, right? Yeah, that's Steve Marsh. So everyone's watching that and there's a lot of concerned farmers and just ordinary Australians uh, concerned about the fact that this is coming and like we don't have a choice, it's just coming and then he's having to fight it with his own money. And, and although a lot of people are trying to raise money for his cause as well. And we're concerned that he doesn't have a choice, uh, you know, it blows onto his land and then as consumers we don't have a choice to not have it either because no one's protecting the farmers or the consumers' rights. We all have to, uh, you know, prove that it shouldn't have come on our land. And Fran, uh, what about your campaigns, just campaigns? Well, um, we're really concerned about um, children and mothers really. So. What we and labelling because although Australia has labelling laws, they're so full of loopholes that most um, food escapes labelling. And what happened last year was Greenpeace did a whole lot of expensive tests of infant formula and found that one of them, S26 soy, contained genetically modified ingredients. And we thought this was so bad that we joined Greenpeace and we um, sort of 
stood in supermarkets in Sydney and Melbourne and asked supermarkets to remove the contaminated formula from the shelves because we thought this is not fair, it's not labelled, parents don't know that they're feeding it to their children, this is experimental food and this is baby's only food, if, you know, that, and our infant should be able to eat formula that is not contaminated by GM. And there's a, currently in Australia a labelling review and the infant formula manufacturers said that they can't guarantee to keep GM out of their formula and we think this is a terrible, terrible thing. It, you know, we are experimenting on our children or large companies are experimenting on our children and we really think that um, babies deserve better and so do their parents. Could you explain a bit about the labelling laws in Australia? Well, we're fortunate in that we do have labelling laws, but the things that escape labelling are highly refined foods, so that's sugars, oils and starches. And when you look at what's genetically modified, that's corn, soy, canola, cotton, and in the US, sugar beet, those things end up as highly refined products. And they have, you know, soy lecithin, all those weirdly named ingredients in our foods that we don't really know where they come from. Well, often they've been refined from genetically modified um, crops and if those escape labelling we really don't know what we're eating and since eating is an incredibly intimate act we need to know what we're feeding ourselves and the interesting thing is that the more genetic uh, or scientific knowledge about genetics comes out the more it shows that our genes are really important but what we eat is really important and our environment is very important in turning on and off our genes so our bodies and our genes are in constant discussion with our environment. They're not Lego blocks that are completely, you know, passive. And is it the, is it the case with dairy and uh, animal feed as well? Uh, do they come under labelling requirements? No, they're not required to be labelled. So if a cow's been fed um, GM feed, then the milk or any of the other products from those animals don't need to be fed and we think that that's that's completely wrong because that's how a lot of GM crops are sliding under the radar is they're being used for animal feed. How do you think the awareness about GM issues and um, uh, processed foods in general in uh, Australia is? Well I think there's an enormous amount of questioning about our food at the moment and one of the reasons is there's so much ill health around especially in children and what you find are um, the rates of preschoolers being admitted to Australian hospitals has quadrupled between 1995 and 2008. I mean that's a massive for food allergies so food allergies that may kill them, anaphylactic reactions and GM crops were introduced in 1995 and of course Madge and others can't say oh look it must be the GM crops but all we're saying is we want this to be investigated, especially as some of the animal feeding trials that have been done on these crops, and there aren't very many of them, do show uh, allergy type reactions. And they also show cross reactivity. For example, uh, mice uh, was fed a GMP and became allergic to the egg that they ate at the same time, even though they didn't become allergic to the GMP. So that's called cross-reactivity, when you become allergic to something in the presence of another substance. And we really want this to be investigated very rapidly. How can uh, people support what you're doing? Uh, well, we're really concerned about the wheat at the moment. And Australia's seen as a bit of a weak spot because we've just taken on the, a few years ago, the GM canola and uh, some of the farmers haven't yet seen and uh, the markets haven't yet seen the, the disadvantages of that um, that are happening that have happened in Canada and America with their GM crops where they're now experiencing super weeds and um, they've lost a lot of markets for example to the e EU so um, we're really concerned that we want to make sure that this GM wheat doesn't come to our country but also that it doesn't we don't start to grow it and export it to your countries so we really need everyone all around who's concerned about food and um, the environment in terms of the contamination and the pesticides to help out um, the campaigns in Australia um, so that's Gene Ethics which is www.geneethics.org 
and uh, also Greenpeace is doing work on that campaign um, and of course you can also get involved with Madge and um, question what, what we're eating and uh, the health effects of that. Well our website is www.madge.org.au We're also on Facebook and Twitter and really what we're trying to do is let people know what's happening and encourage you to spread the word and if you buy food I think it's your right to ask the manufacturer or the person selling you what is in this, how's it been produced and the more people raise awareness about food um, then the better it is for everybody. And the other thing is um, <clears throat> to support Steve Marsh because this is a world yeah. first in terms of that he's had the GM crop come onto his land and he's suffered an economic loss and he's standing up for it and fighting it even though he doesn't have the money to do that. So there's a Steve Marsh benefit fund also and they've got a web page and they've also got Facebook um, and Gene Ethics also has Facebook and Twitter so uh, they take donations or um, you can make donations through um, another website which is NASA which work as organic certifiers so support Steve, um, do this fight for all of us and stand up to Monsanto and say that they can't um, you know just spread their seeds wherever they want and that we have to take it and um, also support our wheat, GM free wheat campaign. Thank you. Thank you Vivian, thank you Fran, it's been wonderful catching up with you and thank you for all the work that you do.